Hi everyone! In this video, we will have a short discussion on how to report staining results. Let's have a short review on our gram staining procedure. The first step is the application of your primary dye, in this case, crystal violet. This is followed by your mordant, which is iodine, and then the most important step, decolorization using alcohol. And finally, you counter stain with your saffronine. Crystal violet, as the name suggests, is purple in color, while saffronine is pinkish to reddish in color. Here are the expected results. For gram-positive bacteria, they stain a purple color, while for gram-negative bacteria, they stain from pink to reddish. Next, we have acid-fast staining. The procedure for this is different from your gram stain reaction. First, you apply your primary stain, which is carbofuxine. This stain is pink or reddish in color. Then, instead of adding iodine, you use heat as your mordant, followed by decolorization with your acid alcohol. Then finally, you apply your counter stain, which is methylene blue. These are your expected results. For acid-fast bacteria, they should stain pink to red, while for acid-fast negative bacteria, they should stain blue. So how do we report our staining results? In both gram stain and acid-fast staining, this is how you should do it. First, your stain reaction, followed by your cell shape, and then your cellular arrangement or morphotype. And lastly, if you see any cellular structures such as endospores or flagella, you should also report these. Let's now take a look at the common cell shapes or morphotypes. There are two main groups. You have cocci, which are spherical bacteria, and you have bacilli, which are rod-shaped bacteria. And here you can see some common arrangements. For cocci, you might be able to see them in clusters, chains, pairs, and in tetrads. Later on, we will discuss about more of these. And for bacilli, they have various shapes. So you can have cocobacilli, you can have your fusiform bacilli, you can even have your spirochetes, which are your spiral bacteria. And they can also come in forms or arrangements such as palisading arrangements. Here is a list of the different bacteria or organisms that are associated with each morphotype. So you can pause here to take a closer look at the different bacteria. Let's take a closer look on the arrangement of our cocci. Here we have cocci in singles, pairs, and chains. All right. So singles are simply individual cocci that you will be able to see under the microscope. Your pairs are two cells or two cocci that are very close together. So here's an example of a single, uh, a single cocci. That's the middle figure. Your pairs or your diplococci. Then we also have cocci in tetrads, sarcina, and clusters. So tetrads are basically groupings of four cocci, and that's what you can see on the second picture. Meanwhile, sarcina, or octets, are groups of eight cocci that form a cube. Okay, so that is the third picture. Meanwhile, your clusters are grape-like bunches of cocci, and that is what you see on the rightmost picture. Then you also have your lancet-shaped diplococci. Okay, so unlike your regular cocci, lancet-shaped diplococci have a more flattened appearance and may be confused with your cocobacilli. However, you should note that these are still considered cocci. The most common isolate displaying this morphology is Streptococcus pneumoniae. The next major grouping is your bacilli, and these are rod-shaped bacteria that have rounded ends. Okay, and here on the left side, you can see 
a figure with the different types and arrangements of bacilli. The most common ones seen are your cocobacillus. This is a bacilli that is shorter and more rounded than, of course, your regular bacilli. Your diplobacilli, which is simply bacilli in pairs. And then your streptobacilli, which is bacilli in chains. Then you have your palisades, which is an arrangement of bacilli wherein they are standing next to one another, sort of like a picket fence. Let's take a closer look at your cocobacilli. As you can see, they are very short bacilli, or very short rods. And sometimes, it's hard to distinguish them from your cocci, especially your lancet diplococci. However, you should note that as you progress with our course, you will be able to familiarize yourselves with the different ways to identify or differentiate your cocobacilli from your cocci. Then you have your fusiform bacilli. Unlike your regular bacilli, the fusiform bacilli is spindle-shaped, which means the ends of these bacilli are tapered. So you can evidently see this in the figure wherein your rods have very pointy ends. Then you have your diphtheroids. These are irregular arrangements of bacteria. Sometimes they are described as a Chinese character arrangement wherein the bacteria are arranged end-to-end -end, and they can also form palisades. Okay, so in the left figure, you can clearly see an example of your Chinese character uh, arrangement while in the right side, you can see a combination of both your palisades and your end-to-end -end arrangement. Then we have our filamentous bacteria. These are bacilli that are arranged end-to-end, -end, forming spaghetti-like arrangements. And some common examples are your brucella on the left and your gardnerella species on the right. So it's very important to differentiate these from your fungi because they have similar um, morphologies or to the untrained eye, they look uh, sort of the same. Then you have your spiral bacteria. Okay, so there are two main types of spiral bacteria. You have your spirilla, which is snake-like in appearance, and your spirochetes, which are corkscrew-like in appearance. So here in the example, you have a spirilla. Meanwhile, corkscrews or spirochetes are longer and have a more uh, close or a tighter spiral than your spirilla. Let's now take a look at your cellular structures, most commonly seen in staining, which are your endospores. So we have three common types being seen. First is your central endospore, which you can see on the leftmost side. Here the endospore is at the center of the cell or in the middle of the cell. Then you have your terminal endospore, in which the endospore is at the tip of the cell, forming sort of drumsticks or lollipops in appearance. Then you have your subterminal endospore, where the endospore is near the end of the cell, but not quite. So notice the difference between the subterminal endospores and the central endospores. Now let's take a look at some examples. In this first figure, how would you report this? You can pause here while you figure it out. All right, if you answered gram-positive cocci in chains, you would be correct. Now let's take a look at the next example. How would you characterize or report this? You can pause here. Okay, if you answered gram-negative bacilli in pairs and palisades, you would be correct. So as you can see in this figure, there is no clear arrangement that you can see. Some of the bacilli are arranged in pairs, while others are arranged in palisades. In these cases, it would be better to report both arrangements. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe for more content like this.